What's that noise? You rub your eyes and head to the bathroom. The sound of splashing in your toilet woke you up in the middle of the night. You get out of bed and turn on the bathroom lights. You try to find the source of the sound and realize that it's coming from your toilet. You left the lid down so you don't know if there's something inside. You're trembling, unsure if you should open the lid. The splashing sound is more intense. You grab a broom, slowly lift the lid, and see a rat trying to escape. You slam the lid down and call pest control to handle it. Don't worry, not every toilet will have rats coming out of them. But to know how rats can reach your toilet, you need to understand the super agile and dexterous body it has. A rat can fit in any hole, just as long as its head can go through it first. So, if you see a rat as big as your foot, try to look through every small opening in your house. Chances are, if its head went through it, then the rest of its body did too. Their bones are flexible and can take the pressure of fitting through a narrow space without hurting themselves. If a rat crawls out of the toilet, that means it was stuck in the sewers and found itself in the pipes that lead to your house. The design of a toilet is ingenious and revolutionary. The flushing mechanisms are there to make our lives easier so that nothing flushed goes back out. There's water inside that comes from the piping, which means that the rat must have worn a diving suit and swam all the way there. Sorry to burst your bubble, but rats are incredibly good swimmers. They can swim for hours without getting tired and can swim underwater and hold their breath when they need to. So, it's most likely the rat was lost in the sewers and found an opening leading to your pipes. With nowhere to go, it was swimming through the complex piping foundation in your toilet until it reached the basin. Their bodies are flexible and can even pass through little openings if they have to, just as they would on dry land. Pest control arrives at the scene and takes out the rat. They make sure no other rat problems occur and clean the rest of the scene. If you live in marshland areas, similar to that of Florida, then chances are you heard that alligators live in the sewers. That may be an exaggeration, but it is possible to find other reptiles at the bottom of your toilet. Sometimes, lizards can cause a ruckus if you're in a hurry to do your business. Lizards, like many other creatures, also find themselves in certain situations where they're hungry or seeking shelter. Naturally, seeing a lizard in your toilet will creep you out. But don't worry, you can always call pest control to move it to a better environment suited for it. After a while, your bathroom is clean once again. They did a thorough check of your piping and found that nothing was out of the ordinary. The next day, you slowly walk to your bathroom to see if anything is lurking at the bottom. Your heart is pounding and you're sweating. You open the lid and don't find anything. You flush the toilet once more just to make sure there's nothing that will jump out and scare you. A few minutes pass and it seems clear. You get a strong feeling that nothing is happening. But your dog keeps barking at the bathroom door. You go inside and lift the lid open. You instantly slam it shut and grab your dog away from it. You call the pest control again and show them what your dog found. You can handle rats and lizards, but this takes the cake. The pest control grabs a bag and puts a large snake inside. Yes, snakes sometimes crawl out of toilets in different places around the world. They also find themselves lost in a network of pipes and seek dark places when they're not basking in the sun. Snakes and lizards are cold-blooded creatures, meaning they need external heat to keep them warm. Mammals, on the other hand, are warm-blooded, which means that their bodies can regulate the heat for them. A reptile's body heat is generated by basking under the sun and lasts till nighttime. So this snake just wanted to escape the heat and find a way out. They're also surprisingly good swimmers. Some snakes have evolved to live in open water and are referred to as sea snakes. The tips of their tails resemble that of an eel, but rest assured, they're snakes to the core. Don't worry, you won't find these poisonous slithering creatures in your toilets. They live far from metropolitan areas or anywhere inland. There was a case of a possum crawling out of a toilet in Australia. Possums can grow to the size of a house cat or a small dog, but this possum was just a little baby. 
Experts haven't seen a case like this in more than 30 years upon extracting it. After they took it out, they dried it and kept it warm. Also unexpectedly, the baby possum showed no signs of stress after discovering that it had been in somebody's toilet for quite some time. The experts then did some further tests and found out that it's clean and healthy as a horse, or in this case, a possum. There's no telling when you'll find a rodent or a reptile in your toilet, but there are plenty of insects out there. Spiders can't swim, so they won't be diving through the piping networks. However, they will still seek shelter and see your toilet as a great opportunity to create a web network to catch insects like roaches, flies, mosquitoes, and so on. Also down under in Australia, black widows lurk around trying to find the best place to set up their web to catch prey. It's no surprise to see them living in a toilet that naturally resembles a cave. Seeing any spider in your toilet is already terrifying enough, but finding one of the most poisonous spiders in your bathroom is a whole new level of shock. If that happens, you must be living in an area where black widows are abundant and easily sneak into your house. They're mainly found in places like kitchen cupboards or small corners of a garage. It's especially dangerous to stick your hand in the dark places where you can't see anything, in case a black widow gets annoyed and lets out its anger at you. Baby black widows don't resemble the fierce-looking adults, and it's better to watch out for the females, since they're more dangerous than the males. It's not easy to distinguish between the two, but just a heads up, the best way to identify a black widow is the red-colored hourglass on its body. There are different species of black widows, so some of the hourglass markings might look quite different, and some might have different colors, like orange. Either way, stay back when you see a black widow. And contrary to the scare that you might find a black widow in your house, they're mainly found outdoors. After all these hectic pest control problems, you decide to completely revamp your bathroom and the plumbing. You get some professionals to put a camera through the pipes to spot any holes or nests that might spawn some creatures. Next, you make sure to keep your toilet clean by disinfecting it with proper detergents. If you can't find some or don't have the time to get one, you can use white wine vinegar or baking soda. Use those fresheners with a brush and start scrubbing frequently. That way, it'll be clean and have a nice smell whenever you flush. Another precaution to take is to keep your toilet dry. Some of these pests like the humidity, which is why they enjoy bathrooms so much. Make sure to dry up some still water lying around or wipe the spilled water from after you shower. Check for leaks around the sink or anything where water can drip. If there aren't any windows around, then make sure to keep the door open so that the humidity won't be contained. Constantly spray your bathroom with a bug repellent to maximize the effect. This can also be applied to kitchens where water leaks can be a problem. Little critters can also crawl up sinkholes and can cause a mess or worse, an infestation. Living on your own is fun and all until you're expecting guests. No one to share the cleaning duties with. That's when knowing useful hacks comes in handy. And I've prepared a lot of them for you. You'll be done with all the tedious tasks before you know it. Let's start with the living room, shall we? But before you begin, I recommend you make a cleaning playlist. Singing your heart out and dancing to the beat of the music in between sweeping the floors will definitely make things more fun. Once your speakers are blasting with your favorite songs, it's time to get some real work done. First things first, I'm sure you have at least one or two dirty mugs lying around. Come on, don't be embarrassed, we're all guilty of that. So start by putting away those and anything else that doesn't belong in the living room. That will give you a clear space to work with. Once the decluttering is done, it's time to vacuum the floors. But how about the nooks and crannies of the room? Yeah, your vacuum cleaner may come with all kinds of attachments. Yet, there are some spaces so small and tight that it's extremely tricky to get to, even with those. That's why you should use a paper towel roll. You can squeeze a paper towel roll onto the end of the hose of most vacuum cleaners. Then you can reshape the other end to fit any number of spaces, such as window tracks, sliding door tracks, and chair rail moldings. So next time, don't just throw those into the recycling bin immediately. 
the floors and the carpets are finally dust free. But while you're at it, how about we get rid of all the furniture dents on the carpets and bring them back to their glory? Just cleaning is not enough, you know? We need to make the place look Pinterest worthy too. Anyway, to do that, you don't need to buy any carpet cleaning tools. Instead, what you need are ice cubes. Depending on the size of the furniture footprint, place a few of them on there and leave them to melt overnight. You'll see that in the morning, it's most likely that there'll be no sign left of them. But if you're still able to recognize the dent, try fluffing the carpet with the help of a fork or a credit card. However, before using this trick, make sure your carpet and the material it's made of can handle a few small puddles of water. You wouldn't want to ruin things altogether. Ice cubes are also the answer if you have any gum stuck on your sofa or clothes. Place one or two ice cubes on top of the gum and let it sit until it feels frozen. Then grab a butter knife and gently peel it away without leaving any sticky residue. This next one is for the pet owners out there. Hope you're already wearing rubber gloves to protect your skin when cleaning. If you do, then you can use those to remove pet hair and lint from your sofa. There are two ways to do that. Wearing your latex gloves, either rub your hands all over your upholstery or dampen them and run your hand over the surface of your sofa. Now that you know this, you can let your dog jump on there freely. Now let's head to the kitchen and finish washing that pile of dirty dishes in the sink. Seems like they've been there for quite some time, so it's going to take some muscle power to rub all the grease and dirt from there. Well, not with this hack. Don't toss the coffee grounds into the garbage after you're done with your morning brew. They actually work as gentle abrasives, which makes them perfect for scrubbing pots and pans without scratching them. Another thing you can use for the same purpose is mesh net produce bags. You can make your own scrubber just by tying a few of them together. Kiss goodbye those germs and old sponges. Not literally though, because that would be gross. After the dishes are done, it's time to clean the sink itself. I have just the thing to make that so much easier for you. This electric cleaning brush from Amazon is all about efficiency. It includes four interchangeable heads that'll not only make the sink, but the whole kitchen shiny and new. The small flat head is perfect to get rid of hard water stains within and around the sink. The large one is great for stovetop elements, and you can reach the internal corners of the microwave with the cone-shaped one. What makes it even more distinct from other electric brushes is that it has a pulse function that is for areas with stubborn dirt or grime, so your arms won't need to feel sore after the cleaning is done. The kitchen looks perfect now, time to take care of the bathroom. Uh-oh, the toilet is clogged. Don't call the plumber just yet. Dish soap and hot water are all you need. You might want the water to be extremely hot, but not boiling, since that might crack the toilet bowl. This hack is not for making things worse, you know. Pour at least half a cup of dish soap into the toilet bowl and let it sit for a while. As for the last step, pour a gallon of hot water into the toilet bowl carefully and wait around 15 minutes for the magic to work. The dish soap helps to dissolve and break up whatever's clogging the toilet. Since you're already taking care of the toilet, how about making sure that it's not leaking? A silent, slow leak will cause massive amounts of water to escape your home each month, which could be costly. What you need to detect it if it's leaking in any way or not can actually be found in your kitchen. I'm talking about food coloring. Just lift the lid off your toilet tank and add a few drops of dye into the water. After 15 minutes, come back and check if any colored water has seeped from the tank to the bowl. On to brushing the bathtub and the walls. And you know what? This here sponge brush will help you keep your hands clean while scrubbing the surfaces. Its ergonomic and non-slip handle will give you a secure and comfortable feeling when gripping as well. And the best part is, the brush is washable and reusable, so it's good for your wallet too. Your dirty laundry bag there caught my eye, especially the t-shirt on top of that mountain of dirty clothes. It has some grease stains on it. Those are known to be one of the toughest to get rid of, but I have just the hack for you. 
Try pre-treating the stain with chalk before washing it. You know how weightlifters and gymnasts use chalk powder to keep their sweaty hands dry? It's the same principle. The ultra-absorbent chalk powder will help you get rid of any oil splatter as well as lipstick marks. However, make sure to use plain old white blackboard chalk rather than the ones that contain any wax or coloring. And this will work best if you treat the oily spots immediately after the stain occurs. Once the laundry is washed and dried, it's time to put all your clothes back into your closet. Oh, you just leave them on the chair because the closet is smelly? I've got you covered. What you need to solve that is a jar, a bag of rice, and your favorite blend of essential oils. Pour 1 to 2 cups of rice inside the jar. Add 10 to 20 drops of the essential oils. Cover the top of the jar with a breathable fabric and secure it with a rubber band. Then, shake the jar to evenly distribute the oils. Your DIY odor trapper is ready and it should be good for at least 4 to 6 months depending on the amount of moisture in the closet or any small room you put it in. What is the one modern day convenience we use 6 to 8 times a day that we all take for granted? The answer? The lowly toilet. Some people on social media claim we've been using our toilets all wrong. Rather than sitting in it like a chair, we should be facing backwards instead. That's right, another way to use the toilet is to sit facing the water reservoir. It makes the structure and shape much more logical, giving the toilet different uses. Now you can use the toilet tank as a makeshift desk. It's the perfect place to put your phone, some books, a glass of milk, and maybe even a sandwich. Great for serious multitaskers. But is it really a good idea? Probably not. One problem. Doctors warn that sitting too long on the toilet can cause problems. In fact, spending more than 10 minutes using the can is too much. So don't settle in to watch your favorite TV show. What about eating and drinking? In a survey from the UK, 18% said they eat on the toilet. If you do it, you're not alone. But toilet bowls are covered in 3.2 million bacteria per square inch. Blech! Do you want that near your chips and soda? The toilet is not the dirtiest surface you encounter daily though. What are they? Your toothbrush is one. Every morning that thing you put in your mouth has 200,000 bacteria per square inch. And then there's your computer keyboard. Without proper cleaning, it has almost 200 times the number of bacteria than the toilet. Even your smartphones is a problem. A 2018 study discovered phones are seven times worse than toilet seats. Seriously, when was the last time you cleaned that thing? Most of us grew up with quaint names for the toilet, and some of these expressions reveal a lot about its history. For example, a lot of people use the term potty. Do you know why? This term originated in the Middle Ages. Back then, the toilet was an actual pot. The only way to dispose of the contents was to dump the pot out after use. The easiest way to do this for those living above the first floor was to throw it out the window. In France, they warned passers-by with the phrase Prenez garde à l'eau, which translates to be aware of the water. When you heard those words, you knew to cover your head and run. One story says the 12th century French king Philippe Auguste decreed this warning must be given before each dumping after being covered in the contents of one. You could yell back, hold your hand, hoping you were heard in time. It wasn't always practical. Did you know this also gave birth to the popular British saying, cheerio? Well-off members of society were sometimes carried in special chairs. First used in France, sedan chairs offered a single seat inside a tiny compartment. They even included a removable roof for nice days. Holding on to long poles attached to either side, workers, appropriately called chairmen, transported the sedan around town. To keep their employers from being hit in the head by unmentionable things, servants shouted, chair below. This eventually became cheerio. In an attempt to limit the number of people hit by refuse, the city of Edinburgh, Scotland, passed the 1749 Nastiness Act. 
the law stated that the waste could only be tossed between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. That meant late night walkers had more than just bats and wolves to watch out for. For those much better off financially, the garden robe took the place of the chamber pot. The term actually means to guard the robes. People stored their clothing here. It was similar to a closet, but with one very special feature, a toilet. People believed the unpleasant odor in the room helped keep moths and bugs off their clothing. This toilet's design was simple. It was a seat made of wood or stone positioned above a shaft that led down into a pit. Some fancier ones were even installed above the moat. Or do you call it a throne instead? Here's why. This euphemism can be traced back to King Louis XIV. He often conducted royal business while seated at the toilet, making it the alternative to his usual throne. You can even find a replica of it in New Delhi, India, at the Sulab International Museum of Toilets. Sir John Harrington, godson to Queen Elizabeth I, invented England's first flushable toilet in 1592. Not bad for someone who wasn't an inventor. He was better known as a poet, and by some accounts, a terrible one. He also told inappropriate stories at court and gained a reputation as Elizabeth's saucy godson. To protect her own name, the queen banished him to the town of Kelston, about 100 miles from London. During his time in exile, he designed his toilet, which he called Ajax. That name seems a bit random, but it makes sense. The term Jakes was slang for a toilet at the time, so Ajax was a play on the word a Jake. It was an impressive setup, with a raised cistern attached to a small pipe. When flushed, it would shoot water down into the bowl to remove any waste. Queen Elizabeth eventually allowed Harrington to return to London. He proudly showed off his new invention, and she was so impressed by it that she ordered one for herself. But having a queen as a customer was not enough. The idea for the flushable toilet would not catch on for another few centuries. In 1775, Alexander Cummings improved Harrington's design to create a smell-free flushable toilet. He added the S-shaped pipe we still use to this day. The shape traps the worst odors in the toilet and away from our sensitive noses. Hmm, why isn't there a national holiday in this man's name? But wait, did you hear that the inventor of the toilet was actually a man named Thomas Crapper? Thomas was a real man. He worked as a sanitation engineer or plumber in the early 1900s and created the first showroom for bathroom fittings. He even stamped his name, T. Crapper, on the items he sold. Wallace Rayburn embellished Thomas's story in his 1969 book, Flushed with Pride, The Story of Thomas Crapper. The biography, which claimed Thomas left home at 11 years old to become a plumber in London, where he eventually invented the modern toilet, was wholly made up. Rayburn also wrote about the fictional inventor of the brasserie in Bust Up, the uplifting tale of Otto Titzling. But as much as things have improved, Toilets can still be the source of some rather unpleasant experiences. I hope you're not squeamish. We've all heard stories about snakes coming out of people's toilets. Aren't these just silly urban legends? Although rare, snakes can and do come out of people's toilets. Most of the pipes in the sewer system are drier than people think, making them easy for snakes to move through. The only real water they encounter is in the toilet bowl, which isn't much of a barrier for the animal. One family discovered a female jungle carpet python in their bathroom in Australia. She was almost 6.6 .6 feet long. Hmm, I might not use the toilet ever again. You can retrofit your plumbing with a multi-flap if this really bothers you. It lets water and waste out while stopping anything slithery from getting in. You're welcome. What's the most you would spend on toilet paper? One Australian company created a roll made with 22 karat gold. Sold in 2013, it cost $1,376,900. I hope it was three-ply. And it probably didn't last long, since we use around 57 sheets of toilet paper each day. That adds up. Americans alone account for 433 million miles of TP used each year. Fully rolled out, that would reach all the way to the sun and back again. 
Toilet paper wasn't commercially available until 1857, when it was introduced in New York. It was sold in packages of 500 sheets for 50 cents. Before then, humans used everything from leaves to pottery pieces, from corn cobs to pages from catalogs. In 1992, archaeologists found so-called hygiene sticks. The 2,000-year-old wooden tools looked like spatulas. To use one, you simply wrap the end with a cloth. Have to use a public restroom? Here's a tip. The first toilet stall is used least often. So if you're looking for the cleanest spot, this is the cubicle for you. And things in Europe are a little different than in North America. In Canada and the US, public washrooms are free. It's different for Europeans. In places like London or Paris, you have to pay first. Sometimes as much as $1.50. And now that you genuinely appreciate your toilet, why not send it a card on National Toilet Day, celebrated annually on November 19th?